At 23 years old, my income ranks in the top 0.01% of my age group. I've received these four awards for making a confirmed $4 million online. But chances are that you have this great sense of anxiety or insecurity that you may be falling behind some of your peers. Despite learning and taking action, time just seems to be slipping away with each passing day. So how do you actually break into the top 0.01%? What secrets do the elite 0.01% know that you don't? To find out, I analyzed dozens of self-made millionaires. I rewinded my own career till now and I discovered a pattern. Every person in the top 0.01% follows a simple three-part framework that anyone can steal. Now in this video, I will walk you through them all. Starting with the most overlooked ingredients that make up successful people. Ingredients often whispered, but rarely ever seen. To explain this, I want to play a quick snippet of this guy who's worth over $450 million and he's also next door neighbors with Lionel Messi. And this is what he said in an interview with Nelk. I think three components of somebody that does something very big with their lives. One, they experienced unconditional love from one person. You only need one person. For you to know that's possible and it exists. Normally it's someone's mom. But you need, um, meaning you can get arrested. You can do anything you do. You have to experience that. Number to two, be successful. You have to have that because you have to know that it's worth the pain. Love is worth the pain you're going to go through in the chaotic times. The second thing you need is hardcore betrayal and pain from someone you love it could be a female it could be a father yeah it could be a mother it could be a uncle it could be a it could be anything so you're constantly in, engaged and proven to this person that you're worthy but no one knows it's a secret between you and that person it's a relationship and you're never going to win but you need it and the last one is the right enemy you get the right enemy going it can bring out a whole different side of you. Now, after reflecting on Patrick's words, it struck me. I have all three. But let's peel back another layer. Let's take a deeper look into a real life example. This is one of the world's greatest soccer players to ever live. He's won these many Ballon d'Ors, which is the second most in history in the game of soccer, which is sort of equivalent to Tom Brady or LeBron James winning an MVP in their respective sport. If I take a look at his life, I know for a fact his mother has given him unconditional love. I mean, take a look at this. I also know for a fact he's faced betrayal, likely from a friend, teammate, or a coach. But more importantly, he has an enemy. The enemy are the haters, the doubters, the critics, the people that say that Lionel Messi, who does have the most Ballon d'Ors in history, is the greatest soccer player to ever live, which is Ronaldo's biggest rival. His desire to prove these doubter wrongs is what pushes him every single day to get better. Therefore, I want you to think about your own life. Who is that one person that's given you unconditional love? Have you ever experienced betrayal? And who is your rival? You will go to any extent to just prove that one person wrong if you understand this trio love betrayal rivalry and you have the ingredients of some of the most successful people in history now these three essential ingredients were just the beginning they will make you into the person that you need to become however you still need to copy the daily actions performed by the most successful people so you can too join alongside them this brings me to the second part you see, social media is filled with so much fluff like you need to journal, you need to meditate, you need to do cold plunges every single morning. I use meditation to become a millionaire. I reached financial freedom age 21 and I honestly don't think that I would have got there if it wasn't for journaling. Cold showers and how it's really contributed to my success. We sometimes start to believe that maybe this is what's required. I'm not saying all this stuff doesn't work, but after my own analysis of some of the most successful people, I found that a lot of this stuff is sometimes Times unnecessary it's true you don't have to do all this unnecessary stuff just to overcomplicate your days for no reason remember simplicity often beats complexity but what set of actions should you do on a day-to-day -day basis that essentially guarantees that you join the top 0.01 percent of your age group I've got six simple ones that pretty much anyone can copy. First is a waking up habit. This guy who is the CEO of Apple wakes up at 3.45 every single morning. This is what's required to run the world's most valuable company. While the average person gets up at 8.15, Tim cooks up and using the early hours to get some work done. Now, I'm not saying that you should be getting up at 3.45 every single morning like Tim Cook, but at least get up at five o'clock. I myself get up at five every single morning and I know in the back of my mind that I already have a three hour head start before the average person gets up second is what happens outside of work on average wealthy individuals exercise for at least 30 minutes a day but why is this so important exercise is known to improve mood increase energy levels and reduce stress for this reason i like to work out at least five days a week so don't just sit on your ass all day third lifelong learning is a non-negotiable bill gates reads about 50 books per year which is about one book per week elon musk taught himself 
rocket science. Warren Buffett, one of the world's most successful investors, spends 80% of his time reading. Personally, I like to say that if you're not learning, you're essentially dying. For this reason, I like to dedicate the early hours of my day to learn. And this way, I know that I know more than I knew yesterday, which means I'm growing as a person. Fourth is all about prioritization. Successful people often use a tool like this quadrant to prioritize tasks based on importance and urgency. This small hack helps on focusing what's really important and reducing time on unproductive tasks. This is something that I like to take a look at every single day when I sit on my desk in the morning to know in the back of my mind and have this mental clarity that I will get the most out of my day because I found that one task or the top three tasks that I need to get completed by the end of the day that are the most important and the most essential to my business or to my own personal goals. Next is what most people shy away from. It's about purposely seeking feedback. Bill Gates credits part of his success from feedback that he received from his colleagues and friends. More than that, this one study found that seeking feedback is associated with higher job performance. For example, the way I seek feedback for this YouTube channel is by taking a look at the comments for some of my previous videos. If I just continue to post videos without taking a look at the comments and absorbing the feedback, my videos would not get better. Now last is a reminder that 99% of people need on a daily basis learn through experience rather than reading this guy who's worth three billion dollar advocates for learning from doing he essentially says that hands-on experience is far more valuable than formal education for example when starting this youtube channel i could have watched all the videos on youtube to learn how to start and grow a youtube channel however if i did not record and actually post a video i'm not really learning much i'm actually learning by creating videos getting feedback and making my next video better than my previous one if you just adopt these six daily habits you are already ahead of 99 percent of the people out there but there is still one crucial piece missing from this three-part framework that will guarantee that you join the top 0.01 percent of your age group and it's perhaps the most essential of all. This is something that is referred to as hedonic adaptation in personal finance. To explain this, let me give you a simple example. Say you just bought a new car, maybe because you're starting to make some money now. At first, you will get this sense of happiness, but soon it will become the norm. This new car will eventually be like any other car. Now, the only way to get even more happiness is actually by buying another more expensive car. The truth is this hedonic adaptation can lead to what is called lifestyle inflation. As you earn more, you start spending more money, but your happiness as a human doesn't change. I mean, I experienced this myself as well. I mean, I recently bought a Range Rover and in the beginning, you know, I was quite ecstatic. I was excited. I was happy. But soon I was just like, oh, it's just a Range Rover. You know, I, I could have got a Rolls Royce. So am I saying that it's actually pointless to join the top 0.01% of your age group? If we take a look at Warren Buffett, he still lives in this house, which he bought in the 1950s. And he drives this car. Mark Zuckerberg dresses like this, t-shirts and jeans. So what does this tell us? While making more money can bring temporary happiness because you won't be able to buy materialistic things, it will not get you long-term happiness. If you understand this concept, you will spend your money on more meaningful things. Research shows that spending on experiences such as travel, learning new skills, hobbies can offer much longer lasting happiness than the traditional just buying materialistic things. Therefore, this concept helps us realize that once basic needs are being met, more may not significantly increase long-term happiness. All of this then encourages us to spend our money much more wisely, which means investing, saving money, or maybe spending money more so on experiences, which can offer much longer lasting happiness. Now, this was a three-step framework that allowed myself and other successful people to join the top 0.01% of their age group. So you just learned how my income ranks in the top 0.01% of my age group. But let me ask you a question. Have you ever wondered and thought to yourself how there are some dumb, quote unquote, low IQ people that just seem to make millions? You don't know what it is, but they seem to work less than you. They're less smarter than you, but they're somehow seeing more success than you. Now, I've thought about the exact same question. Now, for this reason, I have created this video that you could find on the screen that dives deep and that analyzes this question. And I've spent hours researching for this video and I have found an answer. Check out this video on the screen. I'll see you there.